three. Okay. Oh, open one of these. Senegal. We're going to come Oh, we were Senegal. in Senegal. Yeah. Yes. Jake, Tim, when you ready? <clears throat> okay. Welcome back to Eglinton TV's interview with Camille Turner, performance artist. She's been all around the world with her signature show, Miss Canadiana. We were talking just now, her influence and her affinity, uh, respect, admiration and inspiration that she gets from the country of Senegal in Africa and the continent. So Camille, yeah, you were saying you've been down there a number of times. So what twice. Twice. Yes. Yeah, that's a number, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these words have changed over the years, you know, a few. Um, what about the people? What about the artistry? What yeah. about the lore? The idea, um, it's a very cosmic place to some degree. It is, it is. What I really loved is the way um, um, Senghor basically um, really kind of made art a really central part of the development of Senegal. Mm -hmm. And so the Biennale is, is, you know, something that came out of that. It's really put contemporary African art on the map. There's so... You, you can't see a Biennale today without contemporary African art being a part of it. And it's largely because of this Biennale and, you know, how it's really... It, I mean, it's... I went just last year or actually this year, again, and it's 10 times bigger than it was 10 years ago. Hmm. It's pretty amazing. And you mentioned uh, Senghor, which is Leopold Senghor, yeah. uh, past president of yeah. the country, and in the 50s, one of the leaders behind the negative movement in terms of French intellectualism of uh, the continent of Africa and uh, French protectorates of the Caribbean that was centered in, in Paris and around, around um, England, a poet, major poet himself. Yeah. So <clears throat> there was always that, the filmmakers, um, the painters. So Senegal has always been, for uh, since uh, colonialism days, one of the hot spots of, of African diaspora culture itself. Yeah. So what, what, what were some of the things that you can remember from those two trips that, uh, that, that you say contemporary? Like there's that big ass statue, right? Uh, yeah. That's what, 60 foot tall and so on? It's pretty crazy. That must be imposing when you start it is. And look at a 60 It's feet. kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, most of us didn't know it existed until a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the African Renaissance. Um, and it, it, there's so much controversy over it. Some people think it's quite vulgar and, and some mm -hmm. people think it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it's just, it's very imposing. Um, yeah, it for me Senegal is it's been a really it's been my introduction to the world of contemporary African art, um, but also to all kinds of things that are sort of I don't know boiling inside of me right now, like for instance um, the door of no return, mm -hmm. you know, chilling in a way, totally yeah. chilling, yeah, and I really love Dion Brand's book and the way she talks about the diaspora being, you know, the door is a part of our, our, our story, whether we want it to or not, we can't... She talks about us always returning to the door, you know, mm -hmm. the door is a part of our identity. Because that door, to explain that, is the, the last look Africans had leaving the continent, yeah. looking towards where they were going to in the, the so-called American New World. Yeah. Your last, last look for, from the dungeons and to go to the ships yeah. is the last thing you see. Yeah. Oh wow, it's that's pretty, I mean, so yeah. cosmically fascinating as it totally, is diabolical. Really. Totally, yeah, the whole thing. And and the really strange and haunting thing is it's it's actually a beautiful place. Mm. Goree Island is beautiful. The, the slave ca yeah. castle is beautiful. I remember um, I had these photographs and I was developing them and the, the woman at the, the place where I was developing them was commenting on how beautiful they are and they are and it, it there is something really you know horrific about all of that beauty and the horror that it contains. Um, I, um, Saidiya, Saidiya Hartman's book um, Lose Your Mother um, I, I read it while I was in Senegal the last time and um, there's something about the journey that she took that really mirrored what I was going through because 
I went to the door and I kept going back. I, I started working with sound. Sound is something I've just been, I don't know, it's, it's something that's really um, inhabiting me um, lately because it's such an immersive medium, you know, and using it to create stories. Um, stories that you're actually walking through. And it's very evocative, it evokes all well, kinds of sound is very, I mean, it's one of the most powerful of the senses, yeah. I mean, whatever you want to call it. It's a very visual medium. Mm -hmm. And it sparks <laughs> you in all that. kinds of things, where it's your own personal yeah. metaphor, yes. flair and universe that, that you create, really. Yeah, so I've been really playing with sound and just using sound to evoke these, these black geographies in Toronto. Mm -hmm. But when I went to Senegal, um, the way I recorded my journey to the, the Door of No Return, and I, I went back three or four times, is through sound. So mm -hmm. I've got all this recording that I, I want to do something with. But um, I went, I was there for two months in Senegal. Mm -hmm. And so the second month, I decided that's, to spend it. That's a in, good time. It was I'm amazing. You, so good. That amazing. Thing like a oh, yeah. spongy. Believe me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Believe me. So the second month, I decided to spend it in this place called San Louis. And I thought, oh, you know, this is a smaller place. It'll be, you know, a chill place to just relax. Quiet and, down. Yeah, and just kind Never of relax. contemplate all mm -hmm. of, all of you know, what I had experienced. Because the Biennale is just, you know, there's so much going on. It's really fun, but, you know, there's so much going on. And then all the stuff with the, the door. But so I thought, okay, I just want to chill. I get there, and the, the second day I was there, I decided to go on this um, architectural walking tour. Uh, the first place that we got to, the guy said, oh, so this um, house, it belonged to a young French couple, they were traders, you know, there were lots of trading posts here, this was the first one, and um, the, they traded in um, gum Arabic and palm oil and slaves. Mm. And by the way, we're in the place where the slaves were kept. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Clifton, I didn't hear another word that mm -hmm, man said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, it was just, yeah, it was really something. So um, reading Saidia Hartman's Lose Your Mother at that place, and she, her, this is her epic journey, and it's her, it's her, she's an academic, but it's very personal, the way she writes. Um, it's heartbreaking, you know, and she talks about how slaves are made. Slaves are not born, they're mm -hmm, made, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and that dehumanization, that thingification that happens. Because you weren't just taken and then immediately whisked to a ship and whisked off. Yeah. There's a journey from where you're captured maybe, yeah. and there's the holding points, that yeah. a lot of those dungeons there. Yeah. Time goes by before you, you know you're going or you might not know but you're ending up going. Yeah. Yeah. Being, that is a powerful experience for someone from the African mm -hmm. diaspora. We all endeavor to get to the continent mm -hmm, at some point, mm -hmm. to at least go and see where it happened and to experience yeah. a spiritual yeah. coming back of the circle, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Um, and there is the search for home so yes. often. How much did you feel at home in Senegal and the African continent? Yeah. And what is that experience like? Because we say we are diaspora, mm -hmm. right? Uh, those of us who are born in the Caribbean, the United States, England, and so on. We want to get back to the continent, but what is that feeling like when you get, get there? And, and is, is, it, is it a sense of home, or what is it in relation to home, belonging? That's, that's a really good question. I actually was there because I, I um, was one of the very lucky recipients of the Chalmers Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And um, what I wrote in my um, application was that I wanted to go to really sort of piece together things that I have only read about or dream about mm -hmm. or they're inside of me because of ancestral memory, you know? Um, but I knew, because I had been there before, that returning is kind of an impossible thing. Mm -hmm. There's something that yearns for this return and there's something mm -hmm. inside of us that really wants to be, you know, just embraced and have the mother quenched. continent embraced. Exactly. Sorry, Mama, cry, you know? Yes. Yes. Let it out, let it out. Exactly. Everything's gonna be alright. 
Yeah, that is what we all want. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what happened with you? It's not. It's not. There are moments of all kinds mm -hmm. of beauty there. There are moments, it, it, you know, I really feel like when I travel, I see myself in a different way. And there, so there's, there's a lot of that. But you're connecting to hundreds and hundreds of years of distance and time and history and longing and yearning and questions and, and language mm -hmm. <laughs> that separate the language is one huge so thing you, that you separates just, you. sentimentality was just sap out of you or what yeah you kind you of just a kill joy to the sentimentalists <laughs> over here you know, I mean, the whole back I know. to the africa movement i know come but on baby there's a lot of there i mean there there are those moments and there there is that return mm -hmm. but it's not what you, you it's not the return like it doesn't quench that longing that comforting, totally no comforting. Mm -hmm. no and what i said in 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 my application too is that you know i don't know where my ancestors um left like through which door they exited africa but senegal the door uh, you know is where i chose to return and that's the thing there's an unknowing there's a never knowing mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. there's this there still is you know and and it's it's really something witnessing people who um, are connected to a past that they can own it and you know there it, it, it almost makes my own yearning more you know stronger but it it also gave me um, it, it made me also want to know more about Senegal and I, I mean I'm just at the very beginning but there's a lot of history there I mean it's a complex place. Good, bad, and ugly, I imagine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I'll give you one instance. Trying to na navigate the space. That, you know, most Senegalese people um, would navigate the space using these, um, these, these buses. Mm -hmm. um, they're really beautiful. They're they're all colorful. Not like maxi taxis in the cabs. <laughs> they yes. Little well, there's there's all of that too. There's a whole bunch of different types of transportation. Um, a lot of times I would take a taxi. Taxis here are expensive. There not so much. Like if for a couple of dollars you can go anywhere. So I would take a taxi. The taxi drivers never ever knew where I w wanted to go. So I would say, <laughs> this is, this is, yeah, but this is... this is some kind of strange opposite movie or what? Oh, it's so weird. But that's the thing. You really are in a strange opposite movie when you're there. Because all the names of everything is in French. But that's not where people live. People speak the language, mm -hmm. but that's not where they live. They live in Wolof. That's the, the, the most the predominant language. local language. And it's a whole different mindset, a whole different world. You know, there's this colonial veneer that's over everything. There's this, you know, the streets are this grid system that's imposed by the French. All the signs are French. You know, the, the names of the buildings. Like, there's so much, um, yeah. And, and, so you would you'd get in the cab, you'd say where you want to go, they would, you know, you'd haggle over the price, <laughs> you'd, 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 you'd get taken somewhere, and then they'd always yell out the window, hey, Gran! And then <laughs> they would have some conversation with somebody, and they would, they would find a way to work out where you're going. And people depended on each other, worked together. There was this real camaraderie there that was really quite beautiful. You know, but you really feel on the outside of that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Dude, There's dude. a lot of things that make you feel like you're really on the outside of things. The language, the you know, it's just it's a lot. So you you got comfort, and at the same time, you know that you are not from there, yeah. and that you will get lost in this yeah. place. Oh yeah. So okay, so you don't feel at home after going back to the continent. You've let go some of the sentimentality. Glad to get there and realize mm -hmm. that the history has turned into more than just. Uh, <clears throat> something that's a comfort. You don't belong in Canada because uh, one of the uh, lessons around Miss Canadian is that they don't expect you to be yeah. they're excluded. Yeah. Sparked by you being looked at at the small in North Bay. You go to Jamaica when you were nine, left Jamaica. You went to Insania, uh, lived in Hamilton. 
go back to Jamaica, you realize you're not Jamaican either. Mm -hmm. So you're not Jamaican, you're not Canadian. What are you then? You're not Senegalese, <laughs> you're not you're taking on the Africa, back to Africa movement, uh, element of sentimentality and comfort. So what is this diaspora thing, man? Where does, what's the diaspora? Because that seems to be where a lot of us end up saying that that's true. we are diaspora and blacks. What does that really mean? That, that, really? That's a very, very good question. <laughs> Nobody want we. You know? <laughs> it's true. We don't belong nowhere. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's what that diaspora is short for. I really think, I mean, that's why I call myself an Afrofuturist. Okay. I really feel like... Um, Space is something you gotta claim, and it might not be a physical. In this case, space. real space. Yeah, <laughs> but really, space. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. And I really think that um, you know we create, we we have to create our future. Um, you know, you look at all those kind of sci-fi white futures. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not in Logan's one. You know, I saw Logan's one the other day, and. White folks don't expect us to be here. No, exactly. So and if we know. are, we're, you know, they're clearly running things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we need to claim that space. Afrofuturism. Yeah. There is, a, I mean, there is a movement. Afrofuturism. Yeah. So, are you part of that then, in terms of that definition, or what specifically about your version of Afrofuturism? Bear in mind that we are trying to contextualize it within the relationship of diaspora. Yeah. That we are of. The world that takes from all of Africa, not just continental Africa, but all of mm -hmm. worldwide, international, cosmic, um, um, what do you call it? Black law. Yeah. And make up ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Afro futurism is what is it for you then? Yeah, well, I mean, I came across um, oh, years ago this Afro futurist listserv that um, Alondra Nelson, Coco Fusco, um, um, DJ Spooky, all those guys mm -hmm. were on. I haven't heard about that, but in years too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So they were, you know, doing their thing, and and um, and it was it was interesting to me. Um, but I think it it's kind of been a gradual ramping up for me. Mm -hmm. This idea of you know, belonging, home, and belonging. Like I've, I, this is this is. Um, Sort of at the heart of everything I do. You live in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. I live in Toronto, yeah. But home and belonging and what that is for me as a diasporic person, you know. Um, but but um, yeah. So Afrofuturism is interesting. This um, Yatasha Womack, this um, really amazing writer who came to to um, to Toronto a few months ago to speak. Um, we had all these 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 um, events going on. There's these young brothers right now, who are ancestors who are, who are doing all kinds of really interesting work um, that's very future oriented. Um, um, so there's African Black Future Month. Mm -hmm. At um, OCAD, yes. for instance, uh, Danilo McCollum was the yeah, organizer. Visual artist in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so she came to one of these events, and you know, she's seeing all this explosion of all kinds of Afrofuturists, this and that, all over. And she says, "So, what is it about Toronto, you know, or about Canada that's um, attracting all this Afrofuturism?" I says, "You know, uh, as Black people here." We're invisible in Canada, and in terms of the, the global black kind of consciousness, we're not really even there either, you know? Like a lot of times in, in global black discourses, Canada is just not even present, not even thought about. We have to um, uh, invent ourselves. We, we, we have to, um, to breathe ourselves into being. We have to create ourselves, and that's why I think there's so much um, Afrofuturist activity in this mm -hmm. Still though, I, mean, I would like to just clarify again that um, the, the, um, the relationship, so that the, the diaspora concept yeah. becomes a part of, is a part of the definition or, 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 of um, 
Afrofuturism, yeah. but with more a more forward-looking thing to reinvent yeah. ourselves That's, more deliberately. Yeah, I think so. And I, I mean, I, a lot of people, I, I think of Dion Brand as an Afrofuturist, and I'm sure she would not say well, that she uh, is. The, yeah, probably not, maybe mm -mm, not. Yeah. I don't think so. But she says to live in the diaspora is to live as a fiction, you know? A future fiction. Yeah, like, I, I, I think we, we're always creating ourselves. <laughs> You know, we're always creating ourselves. Wow, we got to pause on this one here. Um, <laughs> she's not diasporic. Uh, our interviewee today, our Camille Turner, she is Afro futuristic. Uh, you, you're listening to Clifton Joseph here doing the stuff for Eglinton TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, man. Welcome back, it's Clifton Joseph interviewing uh, performance artist Miss Canadiana who's traveled the world with this uh, art form that has catapulted her into um, the lore of modern performance art in Canada. She's here with us at Eglinton TV in the heart of uh, downtown Eglinton West. Thank you for checking us out. Camille, we were just talking about Afrofuturism. Yeah. I mean, it is a concept that has been, uh, has blown up. Mm -hmm. All over, um, and Toronto, you say, is, is one of the hotbeds of it, of it all, and that it has some for some people, a lot of people, yourself included, subsumed the idea of diaspora. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess, last question of that, if you will, does that then mean that we take whatever we can as fuel in this journey into space, as it were, and claim? Uh, multiple definitions or changing definitions or yeah. bringing in different aspects and is it like Rastafari where you know Rastafari is um is uh is not concentrated like everybody is um is everybody <laughs> just say so yeah you go know. for the populate <laughs> I and I is the salvation no, really? right where everybody developed their own I think, version of I think so I think so I think it's it's really about us taking the, the reins you know mm -hmm. steering this thing and deciding for ourselves you know who we are and where we want to be where where and when I say where I don't mean physically necessarily but um, conceptually, metaphorically, um, spiritually, you know, all those things. We, we need to define our worlds for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, one of you, let's do one of you, one of you, uh, about two years ago, you did um, the baby house. I was telling yeah. you to call it the doll house. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> but Francois Baby in the 19th yeah. century, um, yeah. uh, French Canadian politician, he's his home, which is a bit of a museum in Windsor, mm -hmm. was the headquarters of the famous War of 1812 that, mm -hmm. ironically to some degree, um, the Colored Corps, the mm -hmm. Black Battalion, actually beat back.